Let's continue exploring this user interface now that we have a project open. So first thing I want to do is I noticed my ribbon here. Things are kind of grayed out just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select a view. The reason why this is grayed out is because we're not technically in a project view. We're more of in a sheet view. So let's just click on level one before we begin. So you can see that automatically brings us to our floor plan, which is something us AutoCAD users are definitely comfortable with. And it also brings brings up my ribbon and allows me to access various tools. So now let's start our exploration here. So we've already talked about the application menu. We know what that's all about. But just like AutoCAD, we also have the quick access toolbar. Now there's a little bit more associated with what we have here in Revit, but the concept is the same. Find a place that we can place tools that we use commonly and we can access quickly. The great thing about this is it is also customizable. So all the tools here quick access toolbar and if I wanted to go ahead and customize that I can just expand here doing a quick left click and let's say I wanted to add some text a little bit later on um, to this project as we're working I can simply add another check this uh, text here and it'll add another icon so watch what happens I simply left click and boom my text icon appears right here so I have the ability to take away tools and also add tools and that's our quick access toolbar now just to the right of that we also have our information center so here we can also do things like get help we can also uh, access the communication center we can sign into Autodesk 360 and we can also access the app store here as well and we can also you know expand and close out our project and that takes care of our quick access toolbar as well as the information center and both of those are very similar to what you may have seen in AutoCAD now another great thing about the way the user interface is broken down is and the fact that it's very similar to AutoCAD is that our tools are organized into ribbons. Basically everything we need is set up here on a bar at the top of the screen in what Revit calls the ribbon as you will probably know being an AutoCAD user. And just like AutoCAD the ribbon is actually divided into various panels so in this case we're actually in the architecture ribbon and we're actually it's broken down into various panels. We have a select panel, build, circulation, model, room, opening, datum, and even work plane. Now, because there's so many tools and so many things that we can do with Revit, we have to find a way to organize this. So just like with AutoCAD, your ribbons are actually organized into tabs as well. So the great thing about Revit is various disciplines can work on a model or a project together. So we'll have our, you'll notice our tabs are also set up by discipline. So architecture, We'll have structure where we're working with more things like structural members, connections, and foundations and reinforcement. We can even go to a systems tab where we're dealing with more mechanical items here, even fabrication issues, and we're dealing with piping and plumbing and even electrical. But not only that, some tools that all of the disciplines will probably use will be our insert located in our insert tab, our annotate, analyze. Architecture will probably be the main ones using massing, but you get the point. The ribbon is basically divided into, or actually organized by tab and divided into various panels. Now, let's take a look at what happens here. There's a nice area on this user interface just below the ribbon, and that's called the options bar. Now, you really don't see anything now, but this is actually where the options bar is located. And what happens is when you click on any building element, what happens is your options bar is somewhat activated. It basically lets you know what you're getting ready to do. It says you're selected a wall, so you're probably going to be modifying walls. And you can see it highlights this tab over here, and there are all my modification tools. And that's what happens whenever I simply select an element. But I'm going to click back in my work area. Now watch what happens when I go back to a certain ribbon and I select a tool. So I can select a wall tool if I want to sketch a wall. It activates my options bar again. Now the great thing about this is it allows me to quickly access some constraints and different ways that I can control the items and building elements that I'm sketching into my project. So for instance, we set up a wall, we activated that tool, we can actually control the height of that wall, what level it's on, or what story it's on. We can control the location line, which basically determines where at in the line am I basically controlling the positioning of this wall. Is it the center line? Is it the exterior face? So on and so forth. We can apply offsets. We can create radii as well. And I can also uh, do some uh, wall joins as well. And those are little things that we'll run into a little bit later. But that's the options bar right there. 
So there's two times it activates. One when you select a tool and the other when you select an actual building element. All right, so another area on our user interface is basically our main draw area. Since we're here, just below our options bar is our main draw area. And this is where you'll see all your views and all your building elements. Now, when we're here in a 2D view, you'll notice just to the right, we have our navigation wheel. Now, this is very similar to what we have in AutoCAD as well. It's the ability to kind of navigate through our project, um, looking at it in a 2D way. So we can orbit around and, you know, do things like that. So if I want to zoom in or zoom out while I'm here in my draw area, I can simply use the wheel on my mouse. So pushing the wheel up will zoom in, scrolling backwards towards me will zoom out. Now, if I want to zoom into a particular location, I can actually select an element, then zoom, and Revit does a nice job of focusing in on that element. Had I not selected that, and I tried to do a zoom. Let's say I wanted to look at this area here, and I'm just simply zooming here in the middle. It's not going to work very well. So make sure your mouse is either in place or that building element is highlighted, and the zoom works much, much more better and much more beneficial. All right. So we can even orb or pan around here in 2D as well by squeezing down our mouse. So that gives us some 2D controls as well. Now, just below our draw area and just below our navigation wheel, we have our view controls bar. This area is great because we can actually control the scale of our drawings. So you can see here we have an initial scale set up of 1 to 100. If I wanted to, I can switch that to something, let's say, oh, 1 to 50. And now my view scale has changed. I also have the ability to mess with the detail of my view. So I can, right now, we're set in a medium detail level. You can really see the benefit of this if we scroll in to an area, oh, let's say where we may have two different types of walls that meet. So if you take your, uh, do your scroll that I just showed you with your mouse wheel, and we'll come here between these two grid lines, oh, we'll say right here at grid line 5, I'm going to scroll in, and you can see we have two types of walls here. So I can select this wall or just hover over it, and I know that this is a curtain wall, and I can tell so graphically. And then when I hover over this one here, I can see that this is a basic wall with timber cladding. I can also see the various layers associated with both of these wall types. Now that's because we're actually set to a medium level. So if I wanted to see more detail, I can up that and I can get more. But I think with this one, the medium is probably the highest it'll go. But if I do want to just darken out these walls, let's say I'm early in the design process and we really haven't detailed out what kind of walls yet, we just have an idea of the thicknesses, I can simply come back down here and I can go to a more coarse detail level and take a look at that. That'll black out my walls, providing me with less detail in my model. So pretty helpful stuff. Uh, I'm going to go back to my medium here. So another thing we can also do, I'm going to scroll back in using my mouse, is just to the right of that detail we have the visibility, ability to control the visual style. So if you click on left click on that with me, we can switch around from wireframe, hidden line, shaded, consistent colors, and even realistic. Now, we're currently in, I believe, in a hidden line format. So what we can do, if you wanted to see, get a better idea of the layers and the various layers associated with this wall, I can switch it to a more consistent color. And you can see it adds much more color to this plan when I zoom out. But even on the details of this wall, I can see the various layers associated with this wall, whether it's a core, whether it's some drywall or an actual finish, or even the cladding here on the outside. So that takes care of our visual uh, visual style. Just to the right of that area, we can actually work with SunPath. We're not going to get too much into that. That's more of a 3D tool, I would say, if you're doing some solar studies. We have the ability just to the right of that to turn our shadows on and off. That's a nice effect if you're trying to get the 3D floor plan view. So let's scroll out of this floor plan just a little bit. And let's turn our shadows on. So currently you can see with this red X that lets me know, hey, your shadows are off. So if I left click it, you can see my shadows come on. And I know it's on because there's now no more red X over the shadow. This is a nice effect. It could cause a really cool effect uh, on a floor plan if that's your style and that's the way that you know your office kind of represents uh, their floor plans graphically. If you don't want that, you can turn it right back off by again clicking that shadow. Another important tool that's going to be helpful is the ability to basically hide, temporarily hide and isolate elements. That's going to help with the functionality of your project, um, especially if you're working on larger projects. The more building elements and the more families and the more things you have 
inside your project has a tendency to kind of ball things up. So the ability to kind of hide and temporarily isolate things um, is, is really great. So those are the main things you'll probably be playing around with when you first jump into the software. So that takes care of our draw area and our 2D navigation wheel that we're familiar with. So, and also our visual control. One more thing I want to talk about before we jump into these two windows here is how this works in 3D. And we'll just take a quick look. So if I come over here back here to my quick access toolbar, you'll see this little house and I can left click it. And what it's going to do, it's going to take me to a default 3D view. Now, just like in AutoCAD to the right here, we also have a view cube in Revit. So I have the ability to kind of navigate through my 3D environment here. I can click on top. It's going to give me a top view of my three-dimensional model. I can click here, and it's going to give me a left view. If I wanted more of a perspective or a shot from an angle, I can click left click on a corner, and it's going to give me that. And again, the ability to kind of orbit or, uh, excuse me, zoom in and out is available through the, my wheel here on my mouse. Also, when I'm in 3D, I can pan by holding down as well. But again, this course is going to be mainly focused on getting you over from AutoCAD to Revit. So we're going to focus on the things that we're used to doing in AutoCAD, which is basically sketching, drawing, and creating some 2D deliverables. So don't worry too much about the 3D functionality just yet. All right, so in the next clip, I want to talk about the two main areas that are very different from AutoCAD, and that's going to be our Properties window and also our Project Browser. So I'll meet you there.